Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I wanted to show you guys some of my most recent purchases. And actually there's like this tradition that's been going on for a minute where I always film a haul video and then there's just one more perfume that I'm waiting on. And currently it is a Zara perfume, hibiscus actually. So that's gonna be in my collection soon. I will probably mention it in my fruity perfumes video part two if I end up liking it. So that is just part of this haul, but I have not smelled it. I have no clue if it's gonna be good. So, since I brought up Zara, let's just get into the Zara fragrances really quick. Um, this first one is called Frosted Cream, and I do not hear a lot of people talk about this. I've seen a couple people on TikTok, obviously people on Fragrantica talk about it, but like I didn't even know this existed until a couple days ago when I was just stalking the Zara website because I saw those new four perfumes were launched. I ended up not buying any of them, and I'm glad I waited because... Marshmallow Addiction didn't even have marshmallow in it. And then we found out that Petal Lollipop had some cucumber in it. And I was just like, I don't even know what Zara's doing anymore. Um, anyway, so as I was browsing the website, I came across this and it had notes of strawberry, I think peony, vanilla. And then I went on Fragrantica and then people were saying it smells like Mont Blanc's signature for her. And I was really intrigued by that because first I wanted to see if they're dupes. And second of all, just like I wanted it period because of the name. And I can confirm it smells a lot like Mont Blanc Signature. I'm working on a dupes video, um, but last time I filmed it, I like included something that I thought was a dupe and then I smelled it on camera and I was like, oh my God, this is not a dupe. And so I, I just thought, like I rethought my entire existence and I just scrapped the video. But this is for sure extremely similar, similar to Mont Blanc. And now that Mont Blanc is getting more hype and everything, I really want to put people onto this dupe. I have just made a TikTok about it. Um, go follow me on there, by the way. I try to post daily, but I kind of didn't over, like I haven't been posting to YouTube or TikTok because I did go on a little, I hesitate to even say trip. Like I just went to go visit my boyfriend's family and I was just working, doing stuff on the weekends. Like obviously I can't film when I'm out of town. So anyways, yeah, it's a, it doesn't actually does have orange in it. So there's definitely that, orangey clementine tangerine note that is already in Mont Blanc and they just really resemble each other. I actually put them both on this tester strip. Well, they dried down quite a lot so I can barely smell them now but I was struggling to smell a difference, you know? So I'll talk about it more in a future video. Then I have Rose Gourmand. So I've known about this one for a while. It's kind of like, how do you not know about this whole collection? There's like Golden Decade, which is supposed to be, I think, similar to Lieb. Or maybe that's Majestic Opulence. I don't know. I had read Temptation. Actually, stay tuned for my next declutter video. But Rose Gourmand, I ended up falling in love with Rose's Vinny by Mancera at a perfumery. And I thought about buying it, but then I remembered that this was oftentimes compared to Rose's Vinny. So I decided to buy this instead. And it smells identical, you guys. Like if Red Temptation is like 80% similar to Baccarat, this is like 90, 95 similar to Rose's Vinny. Like I don't have Rose's Vinny in front of me to do side by side. But when I bought this, I was nervous it wouldn't be sweet enough or that the rose wouldn't be as like well blended or refined or smell as elegant, but it smells just as beautiful. And I should have known I could rely on Zara because most of their fragrances are really good. Um, Red Temptation was a pretty close Baccarat dupe, but they just went a little excessive with the dentisty chemical note. Um, this is like, there's nothing too drastically different from Mancera's version. And um, I'll let you know about the performance I'm wearing it tonight. So it's not projecting a lot as I was expecting. Um, I'm assuming Mancera's would be a lot more intense. So maybe that will be a deal breaker. I will update you guys in the future. Then I got Simone Andreoli's Pacific Park. I'm so obsessed with this, you guys. I just want to tell you, if you love super, super sweet fragrances, like you want to smell like candy, you want to smell like dessert, um, but you want like a niche, like Eau de Parfum Intense or an extrait type of version, I highly recommend this. I know everybody's talking about Leisure in Paradise because Fumi Monet really put Simone Andreoli on the map. That's the only reason I ever tried this brand. Um, but this is my personal favorite. Um, Malibu Party in the Bay just reminds me of Creed Virgin Island Water, 
which is a really, I love Creed's Virgin Island Water, but it's just not unique enough. Malibu Party in the Bay is not unique enough to justify buying it in my opinion. But this is so unique, Pacific Park. I mean, it smells like cotton candy and caramel. And there is a fruitiness to it. So there's some fruity notes, there's pear, there's black currant, there's orange, but it's like delicious. It smells like candy. It smells a little sour, but not, not super sour. You guys have to get your nose on this. I know Simona Andrelli is kind of harder to find. It's like a niche Italian house. And I think it's gonna gain popularity. I think we're gonna start seeing it pop up in different stores, hopefully Lucky Scent. I think I got my Leisure in Paradise sample from somewhere, like Twisted Lily, Lucky Scent, I don't remember. So hopefully if you guys can find a sample of Pacific Park, let me know if you like it. But you have to like Gourmands, you have to like a super realistic, thick, heavy-ish um, caramel and cotton candy, like a real cotton candy. Like, I can't emphasize it enough, you guys. Um, if you don't like sweet perfume, stay away. I will say it lacks a little bit of balance. Like there's no woodiness, there's no like florals really that I can pinpoint. I'm not like, oh, this is a rose gourmand. Like no, it's just like gourmand, super sweet. Um, so if that's what you're looking for, I recommend it. It is a little expensive though, but I don't know. The longevity is decent on me. For an Eau de Parfum Intense, it should probably last longer. I will say after six hours, you really only get the base notes and it's not as saccharine sweet. Um, but for the first four hours, it's like heavenly and it smells so delicious. Honestly, I saw a post on Facebook that said like beast mode fragrances are a little overrated, you know, like personally as a frag head, like I want to switch up my fragrance multiple times a day, preferably just two. Um, you know, if a fragrance only lasts two hours, that's ridiculous, like, no matter what price it is, but, um, you know, that's basically all my body miss, and I just deal with it. But yeah, if you're paying a niche price tag, it should at least last six hours, and I feel like I do get that with Simona Andrioli. Then I have Chirosa 68, and the cream, to me, started off as Cloud and Baccarat, but then on the dry down, it turned, it turned into, like, a generic red fruity creamy fragrance however the mist maintains that cloud baccarat dna the entire time to me this is like such an easy affordable topper like i don't mind over spraying this like with my baccarat x straight i'm very very i don't know like frugal with it or like i don't like to spray too much of it like i'll do six to eight sprays of course but like i don't like to just like multiple times a day but with 68 it gives me that vibe um but it's cheap so I feel like I can just go ham with it and I think this type of scent just goes with everything I don't really know what dragon fruit smells like it's weird because like none of these notes mirror Baccarat's notes or even cloud cloud has coconut this doesn't have coconut um but yeah it lacks like the spicy woodiness that Baccarat has it lacks some of those nuances that Ambroxan type of vibe, but it just mimics it in a way that I feel is pretty close. So if you were disappointed with the cream, I would recommend trying the mist. This is just really good. My boyfriend said it smells like something from Bath and Body Works, which I don't know. Don't listen to him, you guys. Okay, then I try Louis Vuitton Atrape Revs. I'm probably saying that wrong. This was a fail for me, you guys. Um, I kind of had a feeling that this would happen because it does have patchouli in the base notes. That's always a risk because you never know if it's going to be stealing the show or if it's just going to be assisting. Um, but the thing is, I've tried patchouli heavy fragrances that I enjoy. So for example, um, Angel Muse by Mugler is literally a chocolate patchouli bomb, but I grew to love it. This has lychee, it has cacao, it has peony, it has a bunch of other notes and then it has patchouli in the base and the patchouli just takes over for me um it actually kind of reminds me of fenty parfum not in the sense that they're dupes but just in the sense of the way they make me feel they're both like aggressive i don't even want to say it's just the patchouli in this it can't be the peony it just can't something about this smells dirty or like green it actually smells like dirt to me and it's really weird because I don't know what that could be. Like I know you're immediately gonna be like patchouli, but patchouli doesn't always smell dirty to me. Um, maybe it's just the way it pulls in here. Maybe it's just the combination of notes. Um, kind of like how Fenty has like a dirty rose or like a powdery 
I don't know, like weird smelling rose. Like that's kind of what I get from this. Um, but so many people love this. So many people say it's like the most feminine, girly, perfect fragrance, like the best Louis Vuitton fragrance. And if that's the case, I don't want to try any more from this line. I'm sorry, because it's not just a designer brand. It's like this private line that you can only get at the store. And it's just like, I'm not even dealing with those hoops, especially for that. And I did try it on my skin and it gave me a headache and I have never wanted to scrub off a fragrance more than that one. Last but not least is Fresh's Sugar Lychee. Do not sleep on this one, you guys. The packaging is absolutely dreadful, but I do like their full bottles. They look kind of cute to me. This is so delicious. Shout out to Notorious Neff, aka Nefertiti on TikTok. She has like her main page and I, I found her TikTok like before I found her beauty one. She's very relatable. She's so personable. I really liked her main TikTok and then she made a separate one for skincare and fragrance. And that made me so excited because I was like, I love perfume. Like I've been making perfume content. Like now someone, someone I like to watch on TikTok is into the same things as me. And I thought it was cool. She recommended this fragrance and said how underrated it is, how good it is. And you guys, she was not lying. Like this is so underrated. I can't believe more people don't talk about it because everyone's like, there's not enough mango fragrances. I want more mango fragrances and so do I. Um, people talk so much about mango skin, which I'm not saying it's a bad scent at all. It's actually a pretty good scent. I think this has mango in it. Like that was one of the reasons I bought it, I believe. This is like such a good mango scent. This has mango, lychee, it has some citrus, but like don't think, don't think an offensive citrus, don't think lemon pound cake, not at all. It's like this lemony lime. So the way I described it when I first shot this video was a lychee mango margarita, but don't think liquor notes. Like there's no boozy, bubbly liquor notes at all in this fragrance, but just think like a mango lychee margarita, the slushy, how it's kind of juicy and fruity and flavorful. And then it has a lime rim. There's a lot of lime in this, like something sour, something citric and delicious. But instead of salt, cause I'm like, there's no salt in this. It's like a sugar rim, but that lime will probably make it a little salty or like citric. Very specific, but it gives me cocktail vibes. It gives me maybe not even cocktail, but just like some sort of summery slushy, something very much along those lines. So. Don't be thrown off just by the citrus. It's not a basic, boring, linear citrus. It has fruitiness going on and it's so perfect for this upcoming season. And I cannot wait to wear it. I would have worn it tonight, but it's more of a daytime fragrance for me. Can't speak to the longevity, but shout out to Nefertiti for that recommendation because it's stunning. I already made a TikTok about it because it was actually my first impressions. But yeah, you guys, um, basically everything in this video was a hit except for the Louis Vuitton fragrance, but that's fine by me. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed. I'm sorry if I sped through this video, but trust me, the previous version was 25 minutes long, so you can thank me for that. <laughs> um, yeah, I hope you guys are having a great day. Let me know if you've tried any of these fragrances and what you think of them down below, and I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.